Hello, welcome to this session. So, if you remember in the previous session, we were talking about the risk what are being posed because of the sustainability agenda or if you are not addressing the sustainability well, then what kind of risk we are going to expose to. And also we have seen that how the risk has been like if you work on well or if you uh, implement well or if you take action or take different initiative with respect to the risk that is turned into the opportunity. And in that context we have seen the different sustainability startup in the last class. In this class what we will try to focus is that we will see few sustainable financial product and services. And when I say uh, fi sustainable financial product and services, it is nothing but those financial product and services they are designed in order to achieve the sustainability focus or in order to achieve the sustainability goal. So, uh, before getting into the financial product and services, let us say a beautiful image what have been given by KPMG. Why I am saying it is beautiful, possibly the impact what it is showing it is not beautiful, but the way it is being shown that what are the different kind of the risk what we are going to face or what we are facing right now. So, this is the top global risk in terms of likelihood or the impact includes climate action failure, biodiversity loss, extreme weather, water crisis, natural disaster, cyber attacks, human made environmental disaster global governance failure, interstate conflict and involuntary migration. So, during the course at different point of time possibly we have addressed many of this risk, but this picture shows that what is the impact and what is the global risk landscape this is prepared by World Economic Forum, what is coming because of climate action failure, because of biodiversity loss and other environmental issues. And if you look at environmental risk of occupies the top right quadrant of quadrant of the global risk landscape of 2022 okay now the of uh, uh, the focus or the point of bringing this picture over here is when we need to address to reduce the risk or reduce the mitigate the risk we need to have the we need to have the finance we need to have the investment or we need to have the fund to mitigate those risk and some of the specific financial instrument services those have been designed in order to manage this environmental risk or in order to mitigate this environmental risk. Now to start with ESG investment and funds this we have already discussed when we are discussing about the sustainability reporting and just to go through this once again ESG investment is investing responsibly following all the three parameters of ESG that is environment, social and governance or it can be investing ethically for one's own financial well-being in the long run. This is also known as socially responsible investment and also ethical investment. And this is typically desirable for the organization, desirable for the corporate to evaluate the target investment not only on the basis of the financial parameters, but also certain goods non-financial parameter like environmental empathy, social responsibility and corporate governance. And wh what the corporate or what the uh, organization get in return of that, if they are maintaining their ESG requirement, it results in higher profit and also it helps in brand building and also the customer patronage. Now this is what the concept of ESG investing, this is being synonym with sustainable investing and this exposure are taken in company by assessing them on based on three non-financial parameters that is environment, social and corporate along with also the financial parameter. So environmental empathy this we have discussed many times this is the duty towards the planet, social responsibility relationship with the external and internal stakeholder and corporate governance functioning of business and conduct of the management. And typically companies are assigned a composite ESG score based on all the above factor. So, this is the difference between the traditional and the responsible investing. And if you see the difference is 
clear that in case of traditional investing the focus is on financial parameter, but in case of responsible investing the focus is on also ESG parameters along with the financial parameters. And this goes further into sustainable theme investment in defined ESG themes and sectors. So, if you remember we have discussed about the sustainable development goals and what are the action plan or what are the focus, what are the agenda or goal for each of the sustainable uh, development goals and the finance, um, financial product services which being designed to achieve that goal or investment for that goal. Then ESG integration that is inclusion of ESG parameter in risk assessment, active ownership, engagement to support proactive corporate action and screening that is screening based on the values of the social factor. So, this is the uh, snapshot of global SRI assets under management and this if you look at this is at 3 different time period that is 2014, 2016 and 2018 and over a period of time what are the global SRI asset on the management for different uh, different area that is typically for the country wise. Principle of responsible investment PRI it started by the UN Secretary General Kofi Annan in 2005 and to initiate this responsible investment and finally it was launched on April 2006 and since the number of signatory has grown from 100 to 3000. They partner with UN Environmental Program Finance Initiative, this is the collaboration between UN Environment Program and private financial sector and also the signatories to PRI, signatories to the principle of responsible investment, they commit to adopt the 6 aspirational principles, this is typically known as principles. This is the uh, global presence, fund flows and the number of scheme. So, if you look at the flows into sustainable fund from 2009 it has reduced in 2010, 2011 and also 2013, but if you see there is a very positive growth or very high growth in 2019 and uh, similarly if you look at the number of schemes coming under the sustainable finance, it is growing over a period of time from 2019 to uh, 2009 to 2020. Now, when it comes to uh, opportunity in the Indian capital market, one of the instrument or one of the financial instrument what is is gaining uh, popularity or possibly there is a lot of potential with that is green bond. This is one of the most prominent financial vehicle catering to climate action specifically for projects requiring the long term finances. This is a fixed income instrument that raises the interest for environmental related project and this is typically issued for the purpose of energy efficiency, pollution prevention, sustainable agriculture and other environmental related to other environmental management. Then this is this instrument is also asset linked and backed by the balance sheet of the issuing entity. So, this is the green bond issuance from to, uh, in 2017 to 19 and if you look at the, uh, the uh, different component or the different category that is uh, coming for this green bond issuance is that still the uh, government bank uh, uh, government backed entity is having a a good share over here and also the non-financial corporate and the financial corporate they are also taking a good share when it comes to the green bond issuance. And when it comes to the uh, region wise then European they are having holding almost 45 percent of the share, Asia Pacific 25 percent, North American 23 percent and others 7 percent. And the total issued green bond in India is just 7.5 billion US dollar that is in 2018 and this is actually very minimal or this is very less when we compare the share with US and PRC. So, we can say that we are still uh, facing the undeveloped domestic bond market although there is a potential still we need to develop in order to get a bigger chunk of the sustainable finance in this component. Then also there is a blended finance uh, which is a fairly new concept and identified the financial investment vehicle only in 2015 during UN negotiation for the subsequent years. And the unique characteristic of each capital type can be leveraged towards the share objective of 
scaling of the private investment with its climate impact. So, whether it is a green bond, whether it is a blended finance or whether it is about the any other environmental bond or instrument, each type of it can be leveraged towards the share objective what we are looking for the investment in order to reduce the climate impact or in, in investment with respect to the risk associated with the sustainability. Then when it comes to retail banking, most of the time it is being considered that going green or being sustainability, it is always as the job of the large scale organization or large scale project. But going green is not only limited to large scale infrastructure project like solar, wind energy or water management. Also this can be practiced, this can be initiated within a smaller one like a green building and habitat, a clean transportation, pollution prevention control system and energy efficiency project. Then there is also a scheme for green building finance which is limited to green home loan and mortgage and they are mainstreaming the green value in all construction loan through the innovative product and approaches that incentivize the uptake of the green building. Then we have a green vehicle finance, this is SPI's green car loan and typically they are have offering 20 basis points smaller interest rate and also the longest repayment period. Then we have green insurance, it can help to prevent the risk of environmental pollution and share the responsibility of the damage compensation. Then we have government supported green bank that is financial institution typically it is public or quasi public and they use the innovative financing technique and market development tool in partnership with private sector to deployment of the clean energy technique. The typical example is that what comes under ERIDA that is under Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, this is the government big agency for promoting clean energy investment and this is typically the example of the first green bank in the Indian context. Similarly, you will find many NVFCs, other non-financial sector, they offer the loans at the uh, with different incentives, different terms and condition when it is for the uh, cause of the sustainability or in order to reduce the climate impact, in order to reduce the issues associated with the non-sustainable model. Then in this session what we have tried to do is to understand the investment which is related to the sustainable finance or the green investment and also few of the financial product and services. And if you remember when we are discussing about the different policy instrument, we have also discussed about the carbon market. And the carbon market if you look at solely the market emerge of the emerge from the fact that we are now trading a new product that is the rights to emit or the reduction of CO2. So, the point what we are trying to emphasize over the uh, over here with this session in the previous session or also when we are discussing about the carbon market that when we are addressing the sustainability agenda, when we are trying to reduce the climate impact associated with this, this gives rise to new opportunity uh, that is in the form of the new market, new business, new product and new services. Thank you.